Why do Imperials join the town? Here's an example. The industrial world Saltire Vex saw workers laboring upon pharaoh giants within the ocean whose living conditions were becoming worse and worse. There came a time when the Imperium seemingly forgot about them entirely. They sent message boats decades in the past and even manned shuttles to neighboring planets. All pleas for medicine and supplies were ignored. Horrid epidemics broke out and even the supply ships stopped coming to collect the Prometheum they were mining. Continuing on, Saltire Vex goes through what populations of ring workers call the Great Cycle, bringing about a winter that none can survive. Usually, the tech adapts evacuate the people, but this cycle, there had been no talk or any indication of such. When the Tau came, what were they supposed to do? Of course, in response to this question, a Dark Angel said, fight them to the last breath and die in the Emperor's grace. Perhaps exaggerating the point that the Imperium truly does not care about them. It is no surprise that in such conditions, sick, tired, scared, and starving humans would take the aid of an empire that promises progress, medicine, and livable conditions. This Primaris Marine disrespected a Dark Angel's company master. Here's what happened. Upon Pharaoh Giant Omicroid, a single survivor amongst the rig workers was brought before Primaris Lieutenant Farron, an interrogator chaplain, and company master Gabriel. The woman was shivering from the freezing sea air. The Primaris Marine claimed she should be given a cloak, or if she died, they would not find the answers they sought. In response, Gabriel claimed that compassion was a weakness. In a show of insane disregard of protocol and respect, Farron yanked the cloak from Gabriel's shoulders, a cloak that represented his rank and had seen more years of service than the Primaris Marine's own time in the Dark Angels. Gabriel went to unsheath his sword and strike down the indignant lieutenant, but the interrogator chaplain's hand shot out and stayed his fury. The woman was wrapped in a cloak and her life was spared. Farron even found a flask of recaf mixed with moonshine and gave it to the freezing woman, who in turn gulped it down. This situation, of course, did nothing to lessen the already incredible tension between the Sons of Caliban and the Sons of Mars. On his way to the extraction from Saltire Vex, Primaris Lieutenant Farron made a very risky detour. Going directly against the authority of the Dark Angels chapter, he sought to free a prisoner. The chapter was clearly withholding information from him and his Primaris Marines, and Farron was determined to find the truth. His squad waiting within, the lieutenant halted his repulsor and began making his way towards a prison cell within the sea brig. This brig was suspended beneath a Prometheum rig, and vengeful waves frothed beneath. Farron swung by his arms on handholds beneath the rig's decking until he reached the cell. The rig's woman's body and mind ached with memories completely missing. She did, however, see a mysterious black craft reach the water and soar into space, being chased by Dark Angel's fighters. This was the first clear sign that Farron and his Primaris Marines were being left in the dark, for he had no knowledge of the craft or even of such technology within the chapter's armory. Using the crashing of waves as a cover, he would smash the cell open and take the woman with him. This Primaris Maris risked his life to save a single human. As Lieutenant Farron swung from handhold to handhold underneath a sea brig, he carried a woman with him. This woman, Deal, was a Dark Angel's prisoner who he had freed, and as she held on tight to the Marine, they were running out of time. A side wound upon Farron's side began to bleed and slow his progress, along with the mortal clutching to him, worsening his balance. If time ran out, they would not make it to the extraction, and even worse, risk being caught. If he missed a single handhold, they would fall, Farron sinking to the bottom of the ocean and Deal freezing to death. Farron tore a rusted jagged piece of metal from the brig and demanded Deal to stab it into his side. She did as commanded, puncturing his lung and secondary heart. This was all planned though, for the shock and near fatal blow caused Farron's Belisarian furnace to activate. This implant is designed to give the Primaris one last burst of killing energy before they perish in battle, and this is exactly what the lieutenants needed. His efforts doubled in a moment, and they returned to the waiting repulsor just in time. Riggs woman Jensa Deal used the authority of the Primaris Marines to save her planet. Here's what happened. Deal spoke to an adjudicator of an astropathic choir and pleaded her case. This was a case she had spoken before, that they evacuate Saltire Vex before the long winter comes and freezes the entire population. In the past, she had been denied, but this time she carried the seal of a Primaris. Lieutenant Farron had gifted her with a scroll, seconding her request before the Space Marines sent her off. The pompous adjudicator abandoned his previously uncaring demeanor and took on a look of awe. The seal of a Primaris was truly a rare sight that held incredible power and demanded reverence. Despite this shock, the adjudicator was forced to deny the request, as he had been prohibited from ordering the evacuation by the vague authority of the Adeptus Astartes. Dio countered with the fact that her scroll stated the writer's rank and chapter, unlike the adjudicator's original paper. This swayed the man, and the order to evacuate began. With a simple seal, Lieutenant Zedril Farron had potentially saved an entire planet. This fallen angel shows his perspective on the Dark Angels of the 41st millennium.
Millennium and Angels of Absolution. As Gahoriel flew above the forests of All Hallow, he pondered. He felt as if he was being followed, and not only by the diluted thin bloods who thought themselves true sons of the Lion. This planet, he realized, resembled Caliban, but it was not the true world of the Dark Angels. Forests covered the lands, and keeps and castles appeared in clearings. Souls Well, the fortress monastery of the Angels of Absolution, of course, was the greatest. Such fools they were to Gahoriel. Those with even weaker blood than the so-called Dark Angels of the 41st millennium had the gall to inhabit an arboreal planet and fashion it in the image of his forefathers. Even worse, this chapter thought themselves absolved of the sins of the past. This disgusted the fallen, for no act could erase the shame of the horse heresy. Chaos was in everything, for a brotherhood to pretend otherwise was an insult that could not be borne. Gripping his staff of Calibonite Oak, Gahoriel made for a fortress on the horizon. The sins of their past would soon become reality for these so-called angels. These humans had a run-in with a Chaos Sorcerer and paid the price. Here's what happened. A Space Marine in Black Armor approached the Wellmen of Sixth West Fortress upon All Hallow. As the figure walked, the men discussed, wondering if this was one of the Angels of Absolution. Dread came over the garrison as the stranger stopped within ten feet of them. Gahoriel spoke, exchanging words with the Castellan until declaring they would have the Absolvers amongst them soon enough to teach them their place. The vice of pipes and cables about his head glowed for a second, and insanity came over the fortress. Bones cracked and elongated, muscles bulged and split, flesh wriggled and tore, limbs sprouted from the backs of men, eyes burst apart and melted onto the earth, bundles of needles jetted through gums and filled mouths. The men of Sixth West had been turned into their worst nightmares in mere moments. Come back inside then, brave men of Sixth West, said the stranger. We have much work to do before before our audience arrives. The Dark Angels made an extremely shady deal with the Tau. Here's what happened. By means of a fallen sorcerer known as Gahoriel, a psychic plague ravaged its way through the population of Saltire Vex and further onto the Angels of Absolution's homeworld All Hallow. The population of Saltire Vex was under Tau control, yet the Empire needed to contain this plague from affecting any other Guayvesa wars. They tried to contain it, yet failed, and could not openly massacre those infected without the other Xenos under their control knowing. At the same time, the Dark Angels were tracking this fallen sorcerer and believed the Angels of Absolution to be tainted by this plague. So, within the battlements of Sixth West Fortress upon All Hallow, the Tau and Dark Angels fought together against mutants, then parlayed. A dark and terrible deal was struck between the two factions. The Angels were to exterminate the infected of Saltire Vex, while the Tau were given free reign to purge the Angels of Absolution. This deal would result in the unleashing of the Tau's most horrible weapon and great destruction against a brother chapter. This Dark Angel's librarian sabotaged a Hellblaster's plasma gun after he saw something he was not supposed to see. Hellblaster Sergeant Morakani fought within the battlements of Sixth West Fortress against a warband of mutants. He and his Primaris Marines fought hard and well alongside the Dark Angels, who had even committed some of the legendary Deathwing. In an unexpected turn of events, the Tau arrived, and while the Primaris attempted to fire upon them, they were ordered away from such, as the Tau fought the mutants alongside them. In the battle's aftermath, Morakani witnessed Epistolary Dothriel and Company Master Gabriel execute a Deathwing, who had been touched by the psychic plague that was spreading through the system. More than this though, he witnessed the two authorities parlay with the Tau, coming to a strange agreement with the Xenos. Morakani objected, but was turned down and his incinerator was blessed by the Epistolary. In his entire time of service, Morakani's weapon has never malfunctioned. He and the Machine Spirit were one together, yet in the ensuing battle his incinerator exploded almost immediately and the sergeant was nearly killed, the only thing keeping him barely alive being his Belisarian Furnace. This this fallen angel took on over five space marines by himself. Here's what happened. As the Dark Angels fought a mutant army upon All Hallow, they saw the destruction of the fallen angel Gahoriel who had created it. Gahoriel had already disposed of Sergeant Morakani and the Primaris with him, and he now made for a daring escape. Lieutenant Farron, along with three of his Primaris, Epistolary Dothriel, and Company Master Gabriel converged and opened fire, but Gahoriel was protected by a psychic shield. Dothriel suddenly fell to his knees and shrieked in pain. Pathetic, said Gahoriel. But just then, more Morakani burst through the doors and rammed into the traitor, sending him falling from the battlements. They followed him atop a repulsor that fired its onslaught cannon straight into the heretic. Gahoriel shot out a hand, lifting the repulsor with his psychic might and slammed it into the wall. Gahoriel threw a skull upon the ground that summoned forth a lord of change and disappeared into the shadows, yet the demon was quickly destroyed by a dark talon. Laying on its side, the repulsor made a lucky shot and hit the traitor that no one else could see. Farron then engaged in close combat, while Gahoriel was struck by a stasis bomb and taken to the rock. The dark 
Archangels were brainwashing their Primaris Marines. Here's what happened. Lieutenant Farron and his Primaris were plagued with odd nightmares of battle and had constant strange memories of an Azure light. When going into battle, they felt as if coming out of a trance. When Farron went to the Medicaid with his Belisarian furnace still active, he gained a small fragment of information. But eventually, the same happened to Hellblaster Sergeant Morikani, who saw firsthand the Apothecary using chemicals and psycho-indoctrination techniques on his fellow Primaris. We'll make a useful bullet shield out of them yet, Morikani heard one of the Dark Angels say. Due to his furnace, he was still slightly conscious, unbeknownst to the Apothecary. Morikani opened one eye and saw them using an apparatus of tubes implanted into the patient's head and neck, with pink bubbling fluid, the same chemicals that they use in battle servitors, being pumped into the fallen warrior. These tubes were joined in a similar manner to an arcoflagellant. As the war lights began to pulse as the apothecary spoke instructions, these ended with, When you hear a certain phrase, you will immediately make ready for conflict and concentrate only on those events about to unfold. That phrase is, Battle Stations. This is how the Dark Angels Primaris Marines discovered they were being brainwashed and halted the cycle. After Sergeant Morikani overheard Apothecary Varad speaking of the process, the other Primaris needed to confirm what was happening and stop it. As was routine, after a battle, they were sent to the Apothecarium, which they had been doing for years now, unknowingly being pumped full of chemicals and taken through psycho-indoctrination. This time, they had a trick up their sleeve. Lieutenant Farah knew that if a Belisarian furnace was active during the process, the Marine could potentially avoid the mind-controlling effects or at least remember what had happened. So, outside the Apothecarium, Farron informed the Servo Skull that they were finding a constant biorhythm, a primary specific ritual that would take six minutes. In this time, each Marine stabbed the other under the armpit and into the heart. One brother's wound had not clotted on time and was bleeding profusely. When questioned, he simply stated that he and another had settled a disagreement in a duel. Apothecary Varad accepted this and the process began. When Farron awoke, he remembered everything. The Primaris would discover the truth. But soon enough, so would the Dark Angels. These Imperials made a deal with the Kroot to save their population. Riggs woman Jensa Deal wandered through the jungle-like interior of a Kroot war sphere with two companions. With them, they carried a Prometheum bear, and soon enough, they would discover the Xenos they had sought. The humans approached a mass of Grey Quilt Kroot sitting upon a throne and were told to bow. You come as food, said the Kroot speaker. Small flesh, it added, its quills dipping in disappointment. Deal filled with terror, but possessed of bravery, spoke up, claiming they wished to employ the mercenaries. The crew all cawed and howled and the speaker wondered what the humans could possibly offer them. Deal took a swig of Prometheum and lit a tinder switch, spitting the liquid in a great breath of fire. All she asked was for the crew to allow her people to board their ship, and for each human, the crew would receive one barrel of Prometheum. One birth, one barrel, said the speaker. To ascertain if Deal was speaking the truth, the Shaper bit off a piece of her finger. The Shaper indeed tasted truth, and a deal was struck. Deal had given her people a chance, but the Dark Angels would soon be upon them. This crew took down a Primaris Marine. Lieutenant Farron and his men stormed through the Crute war sphere on the hunt for Xenos and human traitors alike. They rounded a corner into a large cavern-like expanse. A horde of hounds poured into the room, which the Primaris slaughtered, yet they had served their purpose. Crute and humans alike emerged from hiding and doused the Space Marines in a storm of weapons fire. A giant Crute Shaper rose and killed a Space Marine with a pinpoint shot of a plasma rifle. Farron drew his sword and charged the Great Quilt King. The Shaper accepted the challenge, stepping out from cover and engaged the lieutenant. Farron didn't even get a hit in. The plasma rifle smacked into his head at a blinding speed. It then hit him again and disarmed him of the power sword. Farron knew he was outmatched in strength, speed, and reach and was toppled over by the warlord. The crew cawed in laughter as he stared down at the utterly defeated foe, yet waited too long to execute Farron, who managed to stand and tackle the alien. The lieutenant knew he was seconds away from death and had completely lost the fight, but his Belisarian furnace activated and he managed to defeat the crew in a final act and miracle from the emperor. This Imperial took advantage of a Primaris Marine's mercy and paid the price. Riggs woman Jen Sadil had boarded a Crute War Sphere with her population to save them from the uninhabitable winter of her planet. Primaris Lieutenant Farron had given her the opportunity to call the evacuation of her people and had even saved Deal's life. Now, on the Crute War Sphere, the same Primaris Marines and Dark Angels were attacking. Deal and her people were given weapons and they fired upon Farron and his men. Deal fired to miss, recognizing the Space Marine, and was approached by him as the battle ended. Farron wondered at her people being upon the ship, as he was under the impression they were just waiting out the great cycle. Deal showed her appreciation many times, saying her people would live because of Farron. You fired on us, said Farron. You fired on us and sided with the Xenos over your own Kai. I fired to miss, said Deal. I will not. I saved your life on Saltire Vex. I saved it again by getting you off planets. I will not save it a third time, so you can stoop even lower and spread your trees into more deserving worlds. Wait, said Deal desperately. This will all be for nothing if you- Farron shot her in the head. 
The Dark Angels found out that the Primaris Marines knew they were being brainwashed and were about to eliminate them until something changed their minds. Company Master Gabriel and his men fought upon the crude war sphere which the Primaris also battled upon. The Dark Angels made haste to Lieutenant Farron's location to finish the job, but stopped. They saw Farron speaking to the human civilian made Xeno sympathizer that he had saved. Farron put a bolt round in her head and gunned down the rest of the humans hailing from Saltire Vex. Through this act, the Primaris learned the way of the Dark Angels, that none can be trusted, that their ends justify the means. So, deep within the depths of the Executioner's Blade, Farron and his three Primaris stood in a circle. Chaplain Zeroff spoke, saying he had his misgivings, but that the Primaris Marines had proven themselves to the cause of the Dark Angels. In honor of this, there was to be a new brotherhood. They were to pursue leads that the Firstborn could not, specifically those of Ultramar and the Martian Priesthood. Yet the chapter, its information, and its demands would always be held in the highest place of authority. The Circle Primaris was created, 